we have Islamic uh, officials being elected into the office. And does that put America's safety at risk? Well, for those of you who follow me on my personal page, you all know the answer. Now I will flat out say yes. Safety of America is at risk. I will give you a very, very quick background on why anything that has to do with Islam would always be a risk to our country, our freedom, our, our civilization, and our constitution. Reason. Under Islam, our First Amendment does not exist. Any of the five, uh, five parts of First Amendment being freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom of press, freedom of assembly, and freedom of petition. None of those five exist under Islam. Freedom of, uh, freedom of speech doesn't exist because under Sharia, in any shape or form, if you say a word that is disrespect or goes to deny the existence of Muhammad, the prophet of Islam, or Allah, the God of Islam, then you shall be punished by death. Moving on to freedom of religion. Now, yes, a lot of scholars have come in front of cameras or behind podiums, grabbed the microphone and said, in Quran it says there is no compulsion in religion. However, what they forgot to tell you is about chapter 4, verse 91 of the Quran. Again, chapter 4, verse 91, where it says, those who turn their back, I'm giving you a simplified, a simplified translation, but you can go read it for yourself. It says those who turn their back to Islam, seize them where you find them, and kill them. You see, that's that's completely against that no compulsion thing. <laughs> because if you are Muslim and you leave Islam, you shall be killed. Right there and then, the Second Amendment out the window. Now, to back that very specific um, um Verse of Quran, I want to also give you a hadith where it was the judgment, a ruling of Muhammad, the prophet of Islam, says, this is on Sahih al-Bukhari. Please note, every time I give you a hadith, it's always Sahih al-Bukhari. Reason for that is Sahih al-Bukhari is the most completed and most credited hadith book when it comes to teaching of Islam, scholars, supreme leaders, imams, muftis. So, Al-Bukhari, book 89, Hadith 271. I will literally read it. It was narrated by Abu Musa. And it says, A man embraced Islam and then reverted back to Judaism. So a Jewish man converted to Islam, then decided he would like, go, he would like to go back to Judaism. Madab Nejabal, some friend of this person came and saw the man with Abu Musa. He asked, what is wrong with this man? Abu Musa replied, he embraced Islam and then reverted back to Judaism. Muda said, I will not sit down unless you kill him, as it is the verdict of Allah and his messenger. Did you follow this? So a man, a Jewish man converted to Islam, decided to go back to Judaism. He's sitting with a friend of him who's a Muslim. Another Muslim come and ask the Muslim guy what is wrong with that man. The friend says he was Jewish, he became a Muslim, went back to Judaism. The third person, the Muslim guy said, I will not sit next to him until you kill him because that is the verdict of Allah and Muhammad, and I already gave you the evidence within Quran that he should be killed. Then comes to freedom of press. If you go online, simply, let's go to Google, the most filtered search engine of all time. Let's go to Google and look up Islamic Republic of Iran, Islamic Republic of Afghanistan, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Qatar, Syria, any of the Islamic countries, the Islamic countries. Look up their constitutions and their civil codes. You will find in there that says freedom of press does not exist. Anything a journalist writes, movies, videos, audio, radio, life read like this, 
unless they have approval from the Sharia morality police of the country, it is not allowed to be published. Reason, blasphemy law. If you go ahead and publish something that goes against Sharia, you have committed blasphemy law. So you run it by Sharia morality police department. They have a press department in there. You run it by them. You get your approval. Then you publish. So here goes freedom of press. Now, freedom of assembly and freedom of petition. Well, as I said, if you don't have the right to question the leader of Islamic societies, automatically, I mean, you can't question them, let alone petition them. If you ever, for example, myself, as I'm sitting here, I have a bounty. And the bounty is not to kill me. The bounty is I should be captured, taken back to Islamic Republic of Iran, which is my motherland, and a stand a trial. What are my charges? Propaganda against the regime. Did you hear that? Propaganda against the regime. Automatically, I am guilty. I have to stand trial, and I can tell you right now that propaganda against the regime equals either life sentence or death, because a lot of fellow Iranians have faced that charge. Um, so if I can't question, and the reason I stand these, uh, the reason I've been charged with this charges is because I came out and questioned the Supreme Leader of Islamic Republic of Iran, Khomeini, which was the former, uh, Supreme Leader. I have questioned many of the presidents. I have questioned the system in Iran. And because of that, I have to stand trial. So I think, without dragging it any further, I think you understand that under Islam and Sharia, the First Amendment of our Constitution does not exist. With that being said, both Congresswoman Elon Omer and Rashida Tlaib, they both took their oath to uphold and support the Constitution of the United States on a Quran. What is a Quran? Quran is the holy book of Islam. Quran is the guidance to a Muslim. Quran are, is supposed to be words of Allah. So when they took the oath on that very specific book, that book is their stand, which goes against simply minimum against our First Amendment. You see where the conflict of interest starts right there and then. Right there, it's impossible. You cannot uphold our constitution if you believe and follow the Quran that you took an oath on. 